Thank you for listening to Blue Sky Horse Radio. My name is Yeni, and this is at 102.7 FM Radio Waterloo. We are in Ontario, and uh, we have no snow, but uh, the person we're speaking with today already has snow in Saskatchewan. So thank you, Earl McKay, for coming on Blue Sky Horse Radio today. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, there is quite a, few, quite a bit of snow here. It's probably mm, a good foot, maybe, and this was all in one day. This, this happened yesterday, so. Oh, really? And, it, and it's supposed to snow for our next couple of days, so. I mean, what the heck? It's going to happen. It could happen, so. Right, uh, right. I know we're protected right now here in, in uh, our area, but it is that time so of year. Like, your deer so like we see them. You know what? A couple of days ago, I think we had 18 degrees here uh, in Kitchener, and people are wearing shorts. So I don't know if right. it could be global warming. Um, I'm not sure if we should be concerned. Probably we should be, but... Um, so then, Earl, you are a painter, and uh, you are a Métis man. Uh, you're a survivor of the 60s scoop. So thank you for coming on Blue Sky today, and... Do you want to speak a bit about yourself and your painting and all of the things about your life? Well, well gee whiz, man. Uh, yeah, well, I could do that. In, uh, well, I was born in I was born here, here in Saskatchewan. It's a small community uh, the northeast of Prince Albert. It's about three and a half hour drive from here. But that's where I was born. I was taken taken from my home when I was six years old, along with my sister who was two, and then I had another brother who was one. So there's three of us that were uh, put, in, uh, put into a, what I call the system. And uh, two of us, uh, my, myself and my sister, we we're, were put in foster homes, and these foster homes were pretty well uh, one after the other. So, and I keep thinking back, and I, I look back at, at the kids, and I, and I wonder how, how in the heck did I cope with that? With that, with that? I, I wonder about how did I cope with that, knowing that any time I could be moved or... Uh, or taken away and put somewhere else. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and I'm still the same right now because it affected me so much when I was young, that uh, moving all the time, uh, not knowing when you're going to be moved or, or that. I, like I said, it, it still affects me today because I wonder, well, is something going to happen? Yeah. It really, really, really messed my mind up. You know, that's, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, that's terrible. So how, how how have you survived? How did you cope? Because being a kid and going through that, that's brutal. I can't imagine. Well, well you know, uh, I was... Uh, I was... Uh, I was six years old and I was taken away. I was six and then I remember I, I got into a, a, a stage in my life, a uh, part in my life where... Uh, I was, I became an introvert. I wouldn't talk to anybody. I had not a soul because then, by then, I was about 13, I think it was. I was about 13. And that's the time, that's the time my, uh, my life where I understood what was happening, yeah. what was going on. I, I understood that these places I was staying at weren't really homes. And they were yeah. just some place where we were dumped off because some farmer, some white farmer in northern Saskatchewan needed a couple extra bucks to keep keep up with their their lives. So they took us in and we were just treated like uh, baggage, more or less. Yeah, that's terrible. That's horrible. I... I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so anyways, uh, in order to uh, maintain uh, uh, my sanity, I uh, I uh, started paint, I started drawing. I started drawing when I was about six. The first, uh, the first foster lady, foster woman, took us and she, she, she kind of figured out I could draw because I was kind of doodling. So she got me into art. She started 
showing me what to do, how to, that she bought me paints. So I started using paints. And then when I was young, I, uh, in school, I remember in school, I, uh, we, well, I did, I drew Batman and Superman comics to, uh, to raise funds for a school project we were doing. Oh, wow. And so we did, so we did that. So I was 12 years old and that was, uh, that's the time I, uh, made my first, uh, few bucks doing that when I was 12 years old. And I remember when I was, I think I was about 15. I was 15 when I moved to Prince Albert, where I am right now. I moved here when I was 15, and I remember going to the arts club and going there and showing the, the members how to paint portraits because I was, oh, wow. I, was just, I was just natural with my colors. I knew that red, blue, yellow, and white, those four colors makes the flesh tones, red, blue, and yellow, and a little bit of white. That That's that's your flesh tone colors right there. Hmm. And these people, they didn't know it. And to me, I just looked at the paints and said, well, use that, 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 that equals that. And that's what I came up with. So hmm. I, I thought, I, I showed these, these, these older people at the art center how to, how to do portraits, and I was only 14 years old. So I think of that, think back, and yeah, I was kind of proud of myself. Yeah. I was kind of proud of myself for doing that. So, sure. Yeah. Because I was so young. And, uh, yeah, that's incredible. Uh, yeah. And I took art in Brandon, and then from there, after after I took art, we, I, we moved to, to Thompson. And I lived in Thompson for, holy crap. 34, 35 years <laughs> before moving back to my home turf, which is Prince Albert's Saskatchewan right now. And I moved back here uh, from 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, so I've been here for the past 10 years. So back, well, I call it back home because this is where my family lives. My brothers and my sisters, uh, they all live in the well, Two sisters and a brother live in, in this little city, and the rest are just out of town here. But this is this is home now, I guess. Mm -hmm. But Thompson has been my home uh, since I could rem remember. So, uh, hmm. yeah, I've been painting pretty well all my life. And full time, I I I marked I marked my time from 1983. That's when my uh, my son was born, and I was collecting uh, the uh, UIC or uh, un unemployment insurance, whatever you call it now. Mm -hmm. I was collecting that. I, w I wasn't making that much, so in order to uh, to make a couple extra bucks, I uh, I started painting again because I did go to art school, and I just let this uh, my art. I put it on hold for a couple of years because I started working for the government. And, Mm -hmm. But anyways, I, I started painting again in 1983, and I guess since then, 1983 was uh, I've been I've been uh, doing like more or less full time. So that's 17. Holy crap! That's 28 <laughs> years now. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, 38 years. 38 wow. years. Yeah, I have. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's incredible. And you have a Facebook page. Yep. Skulls Artworks, S K U L L Z, Art Works, W O R K Z. So there's two Zs in 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 place of the S's because I am a ZZ Top fan. Ooh, nice. So I threw those two Zs inside the inside the name Skulls Artworks. I like so, that. So, that so there goes the name. There you go. <laughs> And what kind of stuff do you post on your page? It's all pretty well wildlife. But this summer, due to the fact that uh, they found uh, these uh, these unknown graves in Kamloops, I, that's when I got into uh, painting a series of uh, young, uh, young girls in red walking away or walking to some some kind of uh, some kind of home because they were they were homeless they were they were in unmarked graves that's you, you don't do that anymore. man mm -hmm. mankind is weird 
weird, man. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a weird world. So, anyways, I started these. I've got two of them done, and I'll be working on the third one. So, the third one, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a boy uh, standing by a canoe, looking up, and uh, I'll have a uh, coming. I'm, I'm thinking of coming, uh, doing a night scene with a with a campfire and. Out of the smoke, I'm going to have a wolf chasing a couple of ravens away. And I'll have the ravens flying away from, like, in the, part of the smoke, part of the campfire. I, I have it in my mind. Nice. I have it in my mind. What's to what house is going to happen? Yeah. But that's going to represent my third one. So I'll have a three-part series on the... Uh, on this Cam Loops incident, and uh, uh, incident, I mean. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's bad. It is bad, and they keep finding more buried yes, children. And now they're in Ontario. So, you know, what, what are they going to find in Ontario? What about uh, Quebec? I mean, holy geez, man, it's yeah. that's bad. And I did, I did have shows. Pretty well. I'm, I want to brag about myself for a second. Right I did have shows. I did have shows pretty well across Canada, and I was in Toronto maybe four or five times. Uh, did shows in uh, Toronto, and I did shows in Ottawa uh, about maybe four or five times too, and mm. Winnipeg and down down west here. I've had lots and lots of shows. Uh, showing uh uh, my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. And also on your Facebook page, I noticed that you do actually have skulls as well that you paint. Yep, yep. That's that's the name of that's our name. Skulls. Yeah. Artworks. Yes. I do. I do a lot of bison skulls. I do a lot of cow skulls, uh, wolf skulls, uh, beaver skulls, I'm looking around here, uh, wild boars, ordinary cow skulls, uh, I'm doing, I did, I do uh, a whole bunch of shoulder blades as well, oh, wow. uh, uh, moose uh, shoulder blades, uh, uh, bison shoulder blades, uh, Fox skulls. Uh, I'm looking at one right now. What is this? What is this? Oh, this is a wolf skull. Hmm. So you know, people people know me around 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 uh, Saskatchewan here, and uh, they they'll they'll call me and ask me if I'd be interested in uh, buying a skull off them, which naturally I am. So, <laughs> and I've got I, I've. My studio here, studio, studio here. I've got, uh, I've got a bison skull. I've got a big steer skull. I've got an ordinary uh, cow skull. And another wolf skull. They're they're just waiting for the artwork. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I do a skull, I do the inside, the outside, the whole the whole thing. Oh, okay. I mean, if you wanna. The way I look at it, if you want to bring something back to life, give it beauty, inside and outside. Give it back to life that 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 poor creature had when it was alive. That's the way I look at it. That is a beautiful way of looking at it, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have any upcoming galleries or uh, shows that you're going to be involved in, or are you staying home for the winter? No, 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 no. This cowboy doesn't stay home. No? I've got <laughs> uh, two shows this month. As a matter of fact, I've got a show coming up this weekend. And then i got another show a couple, couple more weekends from now. Before the end of the month, I'm looking at my calendar. Blah, uh, blah, blah, blah. December, I've got our own <coughs> our own show here in Prince Albert, 17th, 18th, 19th. And we'll be hosting that. Me and my wife will be hosting that uh, that show. And we've mm -hmm. got pretty well filled up for... 
for uh, the participants, the vendors, the, the artisans. And uh, we'll be showing uh, beadwork, uh, artwork, uh, fabric work, uh, uh, ribbon, ribbon, ribbon skirts, ribbon dresses, whatever. All, all related to uh, uh, native artwork, which I want to promote and show uh, show off the talent that's up here in Northern Saskatchewan. There's lots of talent, and there's 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 lots of artists here that don't know what to do. They don't know how to go uh, approach somebody to for supplies or uh, even to, to do a show. I went through all this stuff. I learned this stuff by my, uh, on my own. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, well, when I was, when I was starting out, I, I met all, uh, I met all the big names, all, all these, all these artists. OJ, Daphne, I met her, Norvell Morso. I hung around with Norvell Morso a couple times in Toronto. Uh, Maxie Noel. Bird. Uh, I met a lot of all these all these old artists, and uh, they, they always told me the same thing. You know, if you want to paint, paint with confidence. Don't 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 be scared of your paint, or don't don't be scared of making mistakes. We all make mistakes. That's how we learn how to paint. If you, if you want to learn how to paint, start making your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Make all the mistakes you can. You learn from this, so that's that's what I uh, tell my students when I when I do classes or workshops. That's great encouragement. I did a, I did a Zoom one a couple months ago. That that went well. Mm, nice. That's a little uh, little city just at the border, Lloyd Minister, I think it was. Yeah, Lloyd Minister, yeah. So it, it was all the high school students, grade 9 to 11, 12. So what I did was uh, I pulled a Bob Ross. I don't want to see it, but I pulled a Bob Ross. <laughs> I painted a picture in 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, I guess you could, so. <laughs> On all the all these other Bob Rossettes, they did the same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, well, it all worked out. It all worked out anyway. Well, that's great that you can do something with high school students, too, and be involved like that. That's pretty diverse. You're a bit all over the place. That's amazing. Well, you know something? If you, if you learn something, share it. Yeah. Yeah. If you know how to ride a bike, show the kid how to ride a bike. It's all in sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, being better humans, for sure. We all need that lesson. Or some of us. Well, you know, like, like I say in my pamphlets there, I, I used to have pamphlets and at the end, at the end, uh, you did, at the end, uh, the epilogue, I, I'd say that, uh, that, uh, God, God, uh, created the, the ark and he took all the animals in and I said, the animals are disappearing right now. They're, they're getting extinct. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And, and this time, this time there's no, there's no ark this time to, to save any animals. So, you know, we're, we're going to watch ourselves. Yeah. I know it's terrible how humans are acting against the environment. Yeah, even the poor polar bears. You don't get. You know. I know every day there's so many species that go extinct, and there's not a lot of mention about it. It's kind of yeah. like people have accepted it, and we're just supposed yeah. to focus yeah. on progress. Yeah, people don't. don't you know, everybody's too busy. To Worried about COVID and worried about them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, before COVID came, nobody was worried about coughing in each other's face or anything like that. Right. I know. You know. We need to be close to other people because we're humans and humans need social interaction. You got it. That's right. 
Yeah. You should be the one getting interviewed. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Well, maybe we can do that another time. There you go. I'll interview you. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to ask me? I'm kind of curious. That sounds kind of fun. Hey, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. How do you pronounce your name? Oh, Yennifer. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't say. That's why. Yeah, it, sort of. You got it. Oh, very close. See, the the yeah. Swedish J is like the Y, which is why I started with the Yeni, because that's compromising. Right. Just like the Swedish chef. I know. You can make fun of me, fun of me for the Swedish <laughs> chef. It's hilarious. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, growing up in Sweden, I didn't even know that you know, like, they, they translate it to Swedish for kids, because kids can't read really well. So they'll, right. they'll do it in Swedish. And, like, so you don't really know that, like, in other countries, the Swedish chef is, like, speaking with a weird English-Swedish accent. <laughs> I found that out as an adult, like, coming abroad, basically. Like, what the heck? So. You don't talk like that. <laughs> we don't talk like that. No, but then you're like, wait a minute. No, some of the some Swedes do talk like that, sort of. So, yeah. You know, my language. My language. That's another thing about the '60s scoop. My language was taken away from me because when we were young, my sister and I, when we were young, we spoke Cree. That's all we spoke was Cree. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't speak English mm -hmm. till we till we got into the system. That's where we lost our language. Every time we spoke Cree, we either got smacked around, a good licking, or, you know, something to deter us from speaking our own language. I mean, we got lots and lots and lots of, lots of times we, we got punished. And uh, I keep telling these people, I said, uh, keep telling, uh, telling people about the difference between the 60s group and resi residential school system. I keep telling people, residential school system people, they had witnesses. Us in foster care, we didn't have witnesses. It was our word against the foster parents. Hmm. If, they gave, if they gave us a good licking and we said we got a good licking, the the system they believed uh they'd listen to the foster parents says, oh he's lying he's lying so apparently apparently my my report when i was a kid there's there's reports on us on on the foster foster kids all the foster kids there's a report on each individual and apparently mine mine says i was a rebel i didn't listen to anybody well of course i didn't listen to anybody you don't treat a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, like a dog. No. You treat somebody like a dog, they're going to they're gonna bite. Yeah. Eventually, they're going to bite back. And, yeah. And that's what I did at 14. They thought, like I was saying before, I, I turned into an introvert. I, I didn't talk to anybody because I, f I figured out what was happening. Uh, all the sexual abuse, all the physical abuse, all the... All, all the mental abuse, all neglect, neglect. I remember, I remember getting uh, locked out of the house because I was late coming home from from visiting friends who were about six, seven miles away. I had to walk. I, I and as a matter of fact, I, <laughs> oh. I'm so sorry. I, uh, I had to build my own bike to to get around. I had to build my own bike. Oh. And I remember one time, a couple times, I, I, well, I was playing hockey when I was young. And I told these foster parents, these new foster parents, well, you know, I'd like to play hockey. Well, you figure out a way to get there. And I remember three times I had to walk. <laughs> six miles. Yeah. I walked cross country, cross country, six miles. Just to go play hockey. 
And the third time I was walking back after hockey, a blizzard came up. So naturally, I I curled up in a ditch and I was uh, trying to keep warm. And the farmer, there was a farmer that lived somewhere. There. He seen me, came and, well, basically he saved me. Because mm. I would have froze. I would have froze. So he knew who I was. He took me back to that far place. And, uh, and uh, all I heard was, he told me to wait. We outside. All I heard was yelling, and he came out after and he says, uh, "He said uh, next next time you want to play hockey, he said, give me a call." He said, "I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ride. I'll, I'll take you there." So, Aww. so he did. So he did. And, and 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 there's a punishment too. I remember we mm-hmm. had to roll up our our bed legs and that. Uh, the lady would get her daughter to put a handful of navy beans on the floor. And my sister and I would, would have to kneel on them. Those were terrible people. That was a terrible time. I had, uh, I don't know, yeah, that was a bad time. I don't know. Uh, I hardly talk about it. And you, yeah, the fact that you survived it and come out on the other side and you can teach other people how to paint and still have a really good attitude about life and still talk about sharing, talks about what kind of human you are versus what kind of people they were. And they were terrible people. Yeah, yeah exactly. They were, they were bad. I don't know what my sister... My, me and my sister got parted when I was 14, and mm-hmm. I guess she went through a bunch of crap as well, and I don't know of the system, and right now, right now, these days, somebody tells me they're, uh, they're foster parents, well, right there, red, a red flag goes up, and... Yeah. <sighs> I know. And you would think that people who want to foster should be people that like children and are kind people. And it needs to be checks and balances for any child that is even in the system. And most of the time, kids should stay with the parents anyways. And it shouldn't be a toxic, punishing way of dealing with kids. Yeah, that's, that's true. Well, I want to say thank you as well to Christine Gallant, who introduced us and uh, reintroduced us again. And I know Christine from our horse advocacy, and her and I are with the same group that we've been with for years now, that we where we talk about horses and issues concerning horses and horses and mental health. And she's the native liaison with Canadian Wild Horses, which is the group that I belong to as well. And um, yeah, thank you, Christine. Right. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. I got to meet her eventually when it is this anyway. Oh, she's, yeah, exactly. Me too. I want to meet her. I've just seen seen her online, talked to her on the phone lots of times, and always follow her posts. And she's... Well, I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. You go ahead. Yeah, well, I was supposed to meet her one time a couple of years ago. Um, Red Deer, I think she lives in Red Deer. And I was going to go see her, and uh, I don't know, something happened uh, to her house or something. Somebody got sick and, uh, or something, so... Uh, yeah. Missed out on that opportunity to go visit her. So. Yeah. You know, I was I was thinking back when I did go to when I did when I was taking art, we measured with a scale rule. Okay. That's how we measured it was scale rule. What does that mean? We had a. I'm looking at one. I still have one. It's uh, kind of like a three-sided uh, ruler. You use it for scaling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we use that, and, but now everything everything is computerized. Push button, yeah. So. Yeah. We... And, there, and, and there's another thing I'd like to add about that artist. 
people ask me, why don't you uh, use airbrush? And I, and, I, and I tell them, I say, well, using an airbrush, that's just like cheating. Why don't you just use a brush? You get the same effect. Takes a while, takes longer, but it takes, you get the same effect. So that's, uh, I'm old school. Yeah. Yeah. That's good though. I guess people that don't know how to paint properly, maybe airbrush. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Or is that too harsh? That's that, that, that's that's three. That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> well, old school is uh, pretty awesome. So let's do more old school. Yes, we are. Mm hmm. Well, Earl, it's been great talking with you. Um. Thank you. And well, you're welcome. I kind of wish I lived a little closer so I could come to one of your sh your upcoming shows, but I guess I... Well, well, we'll probably be in Ontario eventually anyway. We're doing uh, the three provinces right now. So. Oh, nice. Okay, well, let's... But eventually we'll get into Ontario. Well, Kenora, we're playing on Kenora, but we'll, we'll go further east, and then from there we'll probably head west wow that sounds like an amazing trip as well but we'll we'll do it we'll do it great well once once you decide what once i decide something it happens it happens that's awesome yeah. good yeah all right well yeah. thank you so much and uh we'll stay in touch and skulls aren't worse skulls or, wait a minute wait a minute there's another one here www Oh, jeez, I dropped the paper. Dot Earl McKay dot com. Nice. www.earlmckay.com. Yeah, Earl that's one. McKay dot com. Okay, that's a good one. I'm going to check that one out as well. Check it out and have fun and I'll, I'll send you some snow. Oh, perfect. I'm looking forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <Thank you. laughs>